Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Eirik and welcome to my studio in this video on painting resin casts with acrylic colors. I have previously showed you how to paint resin casts with oil paint. Today we're going to do the same thing, but with the slightly less toxic and somewhat easier to work with, more forgiving, at least in some ways, acrylic paint. Obviously, if I had the money, I'd prefer to see my sculptures cast in bronze, but I think this is a pretty decent budget option for those without the means to cast their sculptures in bronze or have them carved in marble, which is most of us. Starts off with making sure your cast is perfect, of course, so we have something good to paint on, ensuring there are no seams, no, no air bubbles. All this can and should be fixed before painting starts, it's all very obvious, every single mistake that you've made when you start painting, so you might have to go back. It's obviously better to make sure none of that is any problem at all. I also make sure the sculpture is clean before painting, so I wash it with water and dishwashing soap to get rid of any grease and dust, and especially grease from your fingers from touching it while you, you fix it and clean it, clean up the seams, and to get rid of any oils that leached out of the silicone while we made the cast. And to make sure all the dust from the cleanup is, is, is gone as well. You could paint directly on the cast, but at least with this type of resin that I'm using here, it tends to leave the seams a different color, so it depends on the type of material that you're using to make your cast out of. So if I want to make sure the seams are not visible and that they won't stand out like a sore thumb even though they're smooth, I have to cover the cast in an even layer of paint, an even color. This could be done with brush painting, but a faster way that doesn't leave any brush marks is using spray paint, which is what I prefer. I was a bit limited in my color selection this time around. I ended up making this cast very last minute before it needed to be shipped out to an exhibition, and so I only had time to go to one store. I wanted a rustic finish to the cast to go along with the sculpture's name, and at this one store, the closest color I could find was chestnut, which was a bit bright and a bit too reddish for my taste, but I think it ended up working out fine. Always spray paint outside, or make sure you have very good ventilation wherever you're spray painting. If you're doing it inside, make sure you wear a mask. I rolled the sculpture out, out behind the studio so I could paint so I could spray paint it without stinking up the studio too much. And in the warm Tuscan summer sun, the spray paint dries very fast as well, which means less time waiting around. A few touch-up was needed, then I left the sculpture out here in the sun for an hour or so, just to be safe. Making sure that it was very dry before I brought it inside. Before I attempt any sort of patina or paint, I always like to do a test. Doing a test before committing to something that's irreversible seems to be common sense to me. Now I forgot to film the test that I did for this cast, but here's another test I did for the last cast I made. A test is valuable and ensures you get the results you are looking for. quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online video learning platform where you can learn anything. Anything from baking to photography to painting. My viewers get two months trial for free. So if you're interested in learning something new, click the Skillshare link in the description below and sign up. Okay, back to the piece we're actually working on. I'll be painting using acrylic colors, thinned out quite a bit with just regular tap water and a drop of dishwashing soap to get rid of some of the surface tension. The brand of acrylics that I used escapes me. It, it was nothing fancy, just something I got at a hardware store. So it's not like the most expensive artist acrylics or anything like that. It's just a simple tube acrylic. Exact ratio of paint to water, I'm not sure of, but it's pretty thin. Kind of like milk perhaps, or a bit thinner, so maybe 70%, 50 to 70% water. 
it's a simple matter of applying a bit with the brush and then rubbing most of it off with a paper towel. Now you have to keep in mind, acrylic paint dries very very fast, especially when it is as thin as this, and so you have to only work in small sections at a time. What is nice is that because of the ultra fast drying time, you can go over areas again very very soon. Almost immediately in fact. So you're not sitting around waiting forever, which you would be if you were using oil paint. Going over areas again will darken things down a little bit more, bring them a little bit color to bring them a little bit closer to the color of your wash than the color of your spray paint layer. In my case, going over the whole piece once was enough and left me with a result that I was satisfied with. Putting a few drops of water on the paper towel keeps it from soaking up too much paint and makes it a little bit less abrasive when you're rubbing paint off the surface. Depending on the quality of your spray paint, this might be a good idea. The spray paints I've been able to procure here in Italy so far has been pretty poor in quality. Or perhaps it's just user error. Whatever it is. It rubs off a little bit easier than I'd like, and so by wetting the paper towel down slightly, it just keeps this to a minimum. There's really no more magic to it than that. Experiment with different colors, different color combinations, and how long you let the paint sit on the surface before you rub it off, and you'll get different results. Experimenting is key. this, I think is a good time to mention Patreon. If you're interested in learning sculpture from me personally and get feedback on your work either on email or via video chat, my Patreon is the place for you. You'll get in-depth feedback on techniques and how you can apply them to your own work. Anything sculpture related goes. We can talk about armatures, supplies, mold making, anything you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. So check it out, there's a link in the description below. To get some of those rusty looking streaks, I water down the paint a little bit more and I fill the brush with the watered down paint and squeeze it out on the surface and let the paint run down the surface. This gave me some pretty nice and pretty natural looking streaks, almost like the sculpture had been sitting outside for ages. And I think it came out pretty neat. Here's the end result at the end of painting. Before we move on to sealing this piece, I'd like to show you another piece and a different combination of colors, which yielded a different result. This is the maquette for my latest sculpture, Empyrean. And you can get these maquettes from Stone Sparrow Gallery in New York, if you'd like. This maquette was the second one that I made. I have a video on how I finished the first maquette on my channel. This version is very simple to make. I spray painted the sculpture white this time and used very thin down black acrylic paint to do several layers of wash all over the sculpture. The acrylic paint dries fast and so by the time one layer was finished, I could almost start over again with a new layer. And I think I did maybe four layers of this in an afternoon. The result is nothing spectacular, but I think it looks pretty cool. If you try different colors on the different layers, you might get some interesting effects. Acrylic colors, or at least the brand of acrylics that I used, tend to dry a little flat, a little dull. Not the most interesting surface sheen, 
So to seal the cast, to protect the paint job and to get some of the luster back, I used wax. And it's the same type of wax that we use here in Italy to seal bronze castings. You can buy it in any hardware store usually around Italy and they come in different colors. It tends to be from transparent, which is what I have here, to a darker brown. They're meant for sealing furniture or something like that, so they're meant to be used on wood. But you can get the transparent kind and add your own dry pigments to it to get whatever color you want, which is really, really interesting. Pigments can be purchased at any art store, or at least every art store should carry dry pigments. Painters use it to mix their own colors with it. The wax has a pleasant smell, kind of like beeswax. I'm pretty sure it's a fairly natural product with, with little oils and, and other products added. The wax brings a bit more depth out of the paint, keeps it from looking too dull and evens out the surface texture so the whole thing matches and we don't have areas that are shinier than others for example. Okay, back to the king. The paint has dried and we will perform the same step we just did but this time we'll use a different colored wax. The wax I'll be using is called Noce. It's the same brand, but the can says Noce, which is Italian for, for walnut. So as you can imagine, this is a brown wax. Brown, like a walnut brown, I suppose. However, it is very, very translucent. And there's only a hint of brown walnut color if you add the wax very thinly. To ensure the wax goes on in a thin layer, I used a lid of my can of wax to heat up the wax. I heat it up using friction, essentially just rubbing my brush around in the wax for a bit until it gets very very soft. Then I apply it to the surface of my sculpture. It'll look very shiny in the beginning but it dries a bit more dull. You'll see this as we as we move through the piece. Kind of like a semi satin finish I suppose, which I think fits the sculpture perfectly. A quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online video learning platform where you can learn anything. Anything from baking to photography to painting. My viewers get two months trial for free. So if you're interested in learning something new, click the Skillshare link in the description below and sign up. Here are some close-ups of the finished cast. That's it for this week's episode. Finally, I've fulfilled the promise I made three weeks ago. I feel pretty good about that. If you want to see this cast in person, you can do so at the Mayam in Barcelona at the Figurativas 2019 exhibition. I believe the exhibition opens on December 6th, but I might be wrong about that. Just keep an eye out on my social media and I'll post about it closer to the actual date. Links to all my social media is in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work, and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. There are several rewards, so check it out. The link is in the description below.
Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.